gotta hold your own. Anytime you get a good spread on the football, and I think there's two good pressure points. There's this finger and this finger. Back in the day, I used to put this middle finger on the top, and I uh, think just as my hands grew, this just felt right. The way I do it, my hands aren't the biggest. I go ring finger on the end, and pinky, that's one, two, three, four down, in between. So I go second and fourth, and actually sometimes it'll end up on the fifth, I've noticed. I put my ring finger in the laces, that's the only one. Um, it's pretty spread out. I usually keep a little air pocket down here. I think the bigger the hands, the easier it is to grip the football and let it rip. So um, for me, you know, I try to put this, this pointer finger right near the tip of the football and uh, let it spin. You gotta hold your own. It's one of the most subtle but critical connections in sports, a quarterback's grip on the football. And from rookies to seasoned veterans, in the NFL, grips are a unique window into every quarterback's story. We're gonna start the DVD off by talking about how quarterbacks hold the grip of the football. If you don't have a proper grip, it's virtually impossible to get the good spiral and the accuracy and everything that you need. My dad wanted me to play football. He wanted me to be the quarterback. He bought some old VHS tapes of some old dude that I couldn't remember the name. Couldn't tell you why we were watching it, but my dad wanted me to watch it. Okay, we want to make sure, okay, that there's space in between the football, okay, and his palm. My uncle taught me, you know, how to hold a ball when I was young, and, uh, and it really hasn't changed throughout my career. These two bottom fingers, the fourth and fifth, are on the second and fourth lace. Really, my, my pinky kind of sits right in between the two of those, and then my thumb is, is down here underneath, and I always try and, you know, leave a little bit of space between, you know, my palm and the ball. I like to be able to see kind of a little space in between there. And I think that allows you to, you know, feel the ball a little bit more, um, to be able to, you know, manipulate the ball a little bit more to the left or the right. If I can find, you know, the ring finger on that second lace, I think everything else just falls into place. The perfect grip often starts with the perfect manicure. My mom always would tell us when we were young too, you know, not to bite your nails because that forefinger, you want a little bit on the end of it to get that last little bit for a spiral. So uh, that's how she got me to stop biting my nails when I was young. <laughs> These two are the last two to come off the ball. So when you throw it and it's coming out of your hand, those last two are gonna create the spiral. Gripping the laces and letting it fly becomes second nature for every quarterback. At least until the weather turns nasty. Well, the good thing is we get to practice outside a, quite a bit, and I think, you know, going up to Wisconsin helped, too, mm -hmm. playing at the University of Wisconsin when it's snowing and it's raining and all that. I actually think snow is a great advantage. The defenders are very slippery. Gotcha. You know, so when they're moving slower, it's good for me. Mm -hmm. The windy ones are the hard ones. You know, we had a windy one against the Giants, and every time we were thrown a certain direction, it would just, it would hit the wind, and it would just... Whoosh. It's not just weather conditions that affect the QB's grip. All-out blitzes also require a bit of schoolyard improvisation. You don't always have time to find the laces. I think sometimes you catch, you know, I always give it like one quick turn. If I get the laces, I get it. If you don't, then the ball just has to come out. Every day we'll have a handful of throws that we're going to catch, no laces on the ball, and throw to a spot. And you get used to it. Oddly enough, I think your, you know, your hand ends up getting on to about the same spot of the ball. Each grip is a unique snapshot of quarterbacking DNA. Hall of Famer Troy Aikman liked the laces to be in the middle of his hand. Hall of Famer Kurt Warner and Lamar Jackson both put their index fingers at the very tip of the ball. And because of his baseball background, reigning MVP Patrick Mahomes palms the ball, even though his unorthodox style goes against what most quarterback coaches teach. A lot of the young guys, they have such big hands, and I have pretty big hands too, but you know, their ability, I think, to transition the football and flick the football almost like a baseball right. is, you know, some of those young guys are spinning the ball so good. I think flicking the wrist is everything, you know. Some people say you gotta flick the booger off your finger, <laughs> you know, so that's one of those things that you gotta really uh, wrist it, and I think that, that helps the deep ball as well when you're really flicking your wrist and letting it ride. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, more analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. We'll see you there.